Amen. I'm so glad to be back. And this afternoon we travel out again to India. So, thank you. And um, when we travel out to India this afternoon, um, my brother-in-law is retiring and there's an event. So, we are going to meet Brother Hari and Sarah, Priya and Sangeet, they all will be there. And um, just last week I met Ravi and Kim. And if, if you know Ravi and Kim, they were with us, they were born again with us. And they got married and they have made a beautiful home, met the parents. And they were passing by and we, uh, from South Africa, Cape Town. And they've given lots of love to the church. They've got fond memories of amazing grace. And they were remembering each and every one of you. So they've given their love. So, 10 years ago, yes. 10 years ago they were here. And they still remember. They are saying, Pastor Sam, when are you planting a church in South Africa? So, I don't know. All right. Praise God. So we'll be gone this afternoon. So we again covet your prayers. But remember, you are not left alone. You have the good shepherd, Jesus, with you. And you've got a great leadership. Pastor Sammy is here and the leadership team who take care of you, love you, feed you with the word of God. And I'm sure that you were blessed with the meat in the last weeks with the word. Amen. I have got all the reports and I've got good reports. So thank you, Pastor Sammy and uh, the leadership who labored in the church, ministered the word of God. May God bless you and honor you. And as you continue to do so till we come back on 3rd of August and uh, we'll be back and we'll be home. Amen. Amen. Don't be so sad. Let us also have some vacation. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Well, um, does Christ want every Christian to prosper? Is a question that we have in our minds. Some may believe that yes, that every Christian must prosper. And some may believe it otherwise. But let's understand what the word of God tells us. And uh, study it deeply. Remember, a pastor's job is not only to preach, but also to teach. And uh, when we learn the word of God together, we grow as a body of God, strong and robust in the knowledge of his word. Remember, if at the name of Jesus knees bow in heaven on earth and below the earth how much more at the word of Jesus amen I said I repeat it again if at the name of Jesus all heaven bows all earth bows and below the earth Lucifer and his fallen angels they bow then how much more at the word of Jesus because the Bible says in the book of Psalms 138 2 he has magnified his word even above his own very name. Praise God. So if at the name of Jesus, demons tremble, and if at the name of Jesus, sick bodies are healed, and if at the name of Jesus, demonic principalities are bound and strongholds are broken down, then how much more at the word of Jesus? Amen? So we are the people of the word, and we'll take time to study the word. So the question is, is it God's will that all Christians should prosper and gain wealth in this life? My dear brothers and sisters, the simple answer to this question is found in the book of 3 John chapter 2 and verse 3. Can you see your Bible? All right. In your Bible, do you have chapter 2? See, no one, no one corrected the pastor. All right, 3 John, verses 2 and 3. It says what? Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in what? Come on, talk back. All right, be in what? Be in good health. Amen. And then it says, just as your soul prospers. So I'm going to focus attention on the word prosper, whereby the power of the Holy Spirit, 
Apostle John writes it twice in one verse. He says that, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Now, Apostle John's statement in all respects means spiritually, physically, financially, materially, emotionally, maritally, every aspect of your life. That's what he means in simple English. That's what we understand from the word of God that if John under the influence of the Holy Spirit is writing the word prosper two times, we must understand why. Now if you understand the word prosper from the Greek word, it has been taken from the word yodu. And it means to help on the road succeed in reaching, to succeed in business affairs. You do literally means to be a successful in acquiring profit or gain that is to prosper, to gain in business, to gain by work. That is the real Greek meaning. A lot of time we take the words from the Bible and spiritualize the whole context. As far as spirituality is of paramount importance to the church, you and I must understand that even in this physical realm, God is equally interested that every believer of Jesus must prosper. Do you believe with me on that? Amen? Amen? So if God wants you to spiritually prosper, God wants you to physically prosper, and the word you do actually means to make gain, to make profit, and to be successful in the mighty name of Jesus, to gain in business. So if we assume that John is writing to all Christians, do you believe that John is writing to all Christians? When he was writing in the, in the Gospels of John, in the letters of John, sorry, in the letters of John, John was not writing to the outsiders. He was writing to the church. And this was the time when John was writing just before his departure. He was about to die. And in his last letters before the revelation, he was taken into Patmos. He was writing the letters, the true intent of the Spirit of God, the purposes of God, the plans of God for the church. And the plans and the purpose of God for the church was in the nows, here on earth, because you and I are the people of eternity, we are products of eternity, we are futuristic people, we are eternal people, we will rule with Jesus on this earth for one millennium, for a thousand years before we have a new heaven and a new earth. So if we are going to exercise authority in the new millennium, how much more we and I have to take authority and possess our possessions here on earth in Jesus' name. That means spiritually you will possess, physically you will possess, financially you will possess, and you will not only possess, but you will exercise dominion over your domain. That is why we were singing, we'll take back everything that the devil has stolen from me. What does it mean? Man, everything that the devil has stolen, I will take it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's my prerogative. That's my right. That's my authority. That's my audaciousness. That's where is my boldness comes that I will go into the territory of the enemy and take back everything that he has stolen from me. Everything. It could be everything. Everything. It could be your health, your wealth, your finances, your marriage, your future, your children. Everything that you can fathom or you can think or you can imagine. God is saying that you will take it back by force in Jesus name. The kingdom of God suffers violence. It's like a cosmic chessboard that God is on the other side and Satan is on the other side. And uh, you and I are the pawns in his hand and he's about to make a move. 
Right from the time of the book of Genesis, God was making moves after moves after moves till the time in the New Testament when he checkmated the devil and he said, that's it. Your kingdom is over forever. That's what he did. He checkmated the devil by the son of his own lineage and he destroyed the enemy and he possessed back everything that he had lost in the beginning. And by the way, my God is not a loser. <laughs> the devil thought that God has lost, but no. There was a chess game going on in the cosmic realm. And God's move was so powerful. And God's move every time from the time of Genesis down the Old Testament to the ushering of the New Testament. We find that God moved so powerfully, he destroyed the enemy once and for all. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And he allowed us, the church, to possess our possessions in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, who does not like his possessions? You know, when you were babies, you liked your possessions. When you grew up, you liked your possessions. When you grow up, you still don't want to let go. You want to love your gold and you love your silver and you love your everything till the coffin box. You will be also clothed with a beautiful suit and have that golden ring and every diamond ring that you have been wearing, they will put it back to you and, and bury you. That's why they say that graveyards are a very rich place. Because people, those who die and are in the coffin boxes, they are loaded with gold and jewelry and silver and diamonds. That's why there are great diggers who go in looking for these valuables. You know why the graves are robbed? Do you think something? Yes, very valuable things are there. It may not be your flesh and your bones disappearing, but there is gold and diamond waiting for them to rob. Come on. That's why there are great diggers. But my dear brothers and sisters, we are the people of possessions and God has made you possessions to possess the land that God has ordered for you. And my dear brothers and sisters, the Bible is very clear in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17. It says all scripture. I like that. That means 100% of the word. Right from Genesis to Revelation. All scripture. You are not a New Testament church. You are the church of the bible jesus is portrayed from genesis down to revelation he is in every book of the bible so you cannot have a sword and miss the other part of the bible you need to be a man and a woman of the old and the new testament are you with me you cannot say that the law is done you cannot say that it has been nailed to the cross and everything is over only the sacrificial law of Jesus was nailed to the cross everything else still remains the same yes. so the Bible says all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate say adequate Amen. equipped for every good work yes. I like that we are made for good works yes. hallelujah whether you are doing business, you are doing a good work. Whether you are raising children, you are doing a good work. Whether you are evangelizing, you are doing good work. Whether you are, you are doing whatever job, you are doing a good work. Amen. That a man and a woman of God will be equipped to do what they are called to do. That therefore we must consider what John is writing to us. And it is important for us to understand the blood covenant relationship. The moment he writes this. It reminds me of the communion table. It reminds me of the sacrificial blood of Jesus. It reminds me of the sacrifice that Jesus has made on the cross of Calvary. It reminds me that I am blood-bought son of the Most High God. It reminds me that you are the blood-bought daughter of the Most High God. It reminds us as a church that we are the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. We are not bought by something material. We are bought by the incorruptible Word of God. Hallelujah. 
We are not bought by something that perishes. We are bought by the eternal word of God. The incorruptible word of God has sought us and bought us and saved us and salvaged us and has placed us into the kingdom. So the blood covenant relationship talks about two becoming one. That means I'm one with God because of the blood of Jesus. You the church are one with God because of the blood of Jesus. When you talk about covenants, marriage comes into my mind. You know why? When I married my wife, her father was not worried whether I'm going to take care of her or not. But her father was very happy because he knows that Samuel will take care of his daughter. Because I have covenanted her in marriage. I have made a covenant and I everything that is mine belongs to her and everything that is hers belongs to me and that is the same relationship that you and I share with God in heaven hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah. because he has covenanted he has ratified it by his own blood he has signed it by his own blood and he says uh, that amazing grace church is my church I will build it and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes. So a covenant brings us to a place and positions us, strategizes us, that it brings us under the umbrella of the family of God, that where we are the co-heirs of God, that God has signed a blank check for you, and you have to put your initials, uh, because you are the joint heirs, you are the co-heirs uh, of every spiritual, physical, financial blessing that his word has promised. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. So why is it some people still doubt? Do you think that God has betrothed you? God has made you your sons and daughters to live in poverty? No. Do you think that God has sought you, only saved you from your sin, washed you from the, your, your uh, past, so that you will continue to live in sickness? No. Remove the lie of Satan from your mind and let your mind be governed with the truth of God's word. The Bible says, Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That means is a present continuous tense. Yesterday you were set free. Today you are being set free. And tomorrow too you will be set free as long as you are governed by the truth of God's word. So the question is never considered that does the bridegroom desire that his new wife will serve a poverty? No, sir. No. When Jesus bought you, when Jesus sought you, when Jesus saved you, he brought you into his kingdom. He brought you into his palace. He brought you to a place of a position and a place of authority. A place where you were robed, a place where you were given an insignia that you can show that authority to Satan and say, get off in Jesus name. I am the daughter of the most high God. I am the son of the most high God. This church is the, is the church of the most high God. And Satan, you have to return everything that you have stolen in Jesus name. So if you come to understand that God wants us, as John says, in all respects to prosper, the question is, how is that achieved? A good question to ask. How is that achieved? Why is it some Christians prosper? And why is it that some Christians don't prosper? And you can see it worldwide in the church. Some people are walking with the Lord, they are in the anointing of God, in the unction of God, they are in the favor of God, they are in the prosperity of God, in the blessings of God, but some people are still languishing, trying to get what has been promised in the word. Why is it not that every believer is walking together in the fullness of the blessings of God and that is what the purpose of prosperity is? So there are two primary paths. First is to, to be prosperous, that you get a worldly wisdom, you get worldly education, get in the worldly system, do your business prospects, gain your business entities and, 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 and then make money. There's one aspect. 
That's the primary aspect. Because you are in the world, you go through the worldly system, you acquire worldly knowledge, you put it into practice, and then you are in that system is that some succeed and some don't. That is why it is called a capitalistic society. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. But the word of God doesn't tell us that. Word of God doesn't tell for the church that the church is a capitalistic church. That only the rich will become richer and the poor will continue to become poor. No. That is a lie of Satan. That is the teaching of the world. The teaching of the word is that every believer irrespective of your background you have been positioned you have been strategized you have been placed to possess your possessions in the name of Jesus whether you like it or not God has placed you positioned you so that you will be a blessing you will receive your blessing and you will become a blessing to the nations and that's what God is desiring for his church to be the second path is is a path that includes work no when the bible says you don't work many people say a quote elijah and said the ravens fed them that was a miracle are you with me god takes you on from miracle to a place of stillness in his presence at the time of a miracle there are goosebumps beyond the miracles there is stillness of his presence at the outer coat there is noise and rampage and there is you know struggle to get over your flesh in the inner coat you are now seeking him but in the inner of inners that you are waiting on him you are waiting to listen from him because you have crossed over from the outer to the inner and now you are in the holy of holies and you are waiting on him the lord it's not me it's all about you it's all about you Jesus when you are in the inner sanctum it's no longer your flesh it's no longer your priesthood it's no longer your kingship it's Jesus alone that's what happens your personality and your persona is swallowed in the glorious magnificence of his presence that's what he does and when you are in surrounded in that glorious magnificence of his presence you lack no good thing hallelujah everything else comes to you everything is attracted to you the money will come to you the job will come to you the business will come to you favor will come to you open doors will come to you you will see the power of God manifest upon your life so the second path is it includes work but more importantly does not consider the labor of our hands as the source of our prosperity see there's a difference but what does it consider it knows the blessings come from the hand of God this the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich who's the blessing Jesus is the blessing word is the blessing blood is the blessing spirit of God is the blessing Amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. it is not our works that makes us rich it is we work but our trust is in Yahweh Amen. our hope is in Yahweh our faith is in the Jehovah Jireh the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob we work hard it's not God never said the Bible says if a man does not work he must not eat we are called to work no one in this land is a sitting freebie everyone needs to work are you with me so we work with our hands but we trust in God for the riches to come over and take over our lives and it's in all respects say all respects these are the people who are seeking guidance God you and I dance that means the Lord if there's a tango it's you and me if it is a ball dance it's you and me if it is a walk it's you and me oh Lord God it's nothing besides you it's you and me yes. 
That's why the Bible says in the book of Romans 8 14 Those who are being led by the Spirit of God Are the sons of God yes. Hallelujah Sons are allowed in the inner chamber Sons are allowed in the inner sanctum Sons are allowed yes. Right into the holy of holies yes. Because it was the blood of the son That was shed for the sons and daughters yes. Come on, it was not for the angels, it was not for the Lucifer, it was not for the fallen ones, it was for you and for me. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for you and me. So that we'll have access into the inner sanctum of his presence. And that's what God is calling. So my dear brothers and sisters, those who are being guided by God, do you think that they are? Not going to have a threat from the enemy No, 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 no They will Even more threat than the other ordinary people I remind you Even more threat Last week Sister Padma was sharing the word And she told me that Pastor this and this happened I got a news that my mother fell And she met with an accident She was in ICU Friday When she was delivering the word here my dear brothers and sisters it's a warfare if you have to possess the land you need to fight the giants <laughs> miracle was at the Jordan miracle was only till the falling of the wall but after that God said you will fight and wage a war and destroy the giants because I have given you the land God is saying I have given you the possessions to possess you must go and possess it in Jesus name that means work is involved that means war is involved that means fight is involved that means determination is involved that means your faint-hearted cannot go there that means the fearful cannot go there it is the ones who are determined to fight a battle they will go and possess the land in the name of Jesus that's why the church in these end time days will be a spiritual warfaring church who knows his enemy and knows how to defeat the enemy and understands how to take back everything that Satan has stolen. So my dear brothers and sisters, if you are the church that is sending missionaries, if you are a church that's funding the missions, if you are your church that send your pastors to preach the gospel, you will be the church that will be under an attack of Satan 24 by 7. You don't like to hear that? But that's the truth and the reality of God's word. But we are the people who are not afraid. We are the people of God. We are the children of the most high God. We will have the weapons of warfare that the enemy doesn't have. We know how to draw a sword. And we know how to strike the enemy. We know how to cut the heck and the neck of the dragon in the name of Jesus. We are not weak people. We are powerful people. We are warriors. We know how to draw a sword out. We know what bloodshed means. We know what it means to get wounded. And we know how to fall down. We also know how to get up back on our two feet and punch the enemy back again that he falls flat in Jesus' name. So this brings us to the major point. Why is it that not every Christian is prospering in every area of life? There are several factors and I'll focus on two this morning. Number one is that they are the hearing from God for the direction in life my sheep hear at my voice give me one instance right from the Old Testament to the new was there any man of God any prophet of God who heard from God who got the strategy from God and then was defeated no, no. no. defeat was only for the people when they operated in the flesh Defeat was only for the people when they did not hear correctly from God Defeat was only for the people when they were seeking the witch People defeat was for the people who were indulging themselves in witchcraft And seeking The voice of the flesh And the logic of the mind And trying to operate in their own worldly fallen system That's why Jesus said my sheep heareth my voice 
That means I've heard the voice of God yesterday. I will hear his voice today and I'll continue to hear his voice tomorrow. My question to you is, have you heard the voice of God today? Research shows 90% of Christians, and I'm talking born again Christians, have not mastered the art of hearing the voice of God. Come on. You hear the word, you pray, you fast, you do everything, but the heaven above you is like brass. You have not fine-tuned your hearing to hear what God is saying. That Rima word has not come to you. You are, have the knowledge of the Logos. You have the revelation and you have the teaching and you have the word inside of you, but you have not waited in the presence of God so that God will speak to you today. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, when the enemy attacks, do they hold that position or give up the ground? Because remember, if you're hearing God's voice today, they will, you'll be surrounded by satanic hordes round the clock. You know why? Because you are a threat to the devil. He will come in hindrances, in obstacles to you, against you, against your ministry, against your word, against your marriage, against your children, against your future, against your finances, against your business. You know why? Because he does not want you to, be, to move forward. You are so bogged down in make, making some flus down here so that you can pay your bills by the end of the month. That he'll not go beyond that limit. That's what he's trying to keep you in. That's why you are in, surrounded by problems. Say, Pastor, I've got this problem, I've got this problem, I've got this problem. Praise the Lord. Because God is with you, you see so many problems around you. Are you with me? And a lot of time you think, hey man, you know, why there are problems? My life should have been a rosy life. My life should have been a blessed life. My life should have been a red carpet walk life. Yes, sir. It is a red carpet walk as long as you carry the cross. The red carpet is the blood of Jesus. The cross that you carry. But you're looking to the author and the finisher of your faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not looking in your strength, on your ability, on your capability, on your education, on your background, on your status. You're not looking on the worldly system. You're looking up. From where my help comes from? My help comes from, from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My help does not come from the worldly system because tomorrow when Wall Street crashes, your money disappears. Tomorrow when the new world order comes in, what do we do? Is a question that we can ask. In those days, we will be still clinging to the Lord. Why I say so? That when enemy attacks, many people drop their hat, give in and give up, and they surrender. And they allow enemy to steal their peace. They allow enemy to steal their health. They allow enemy to steal their finances. They allow the enemy to steal their marriage and their children. The future, the destiny. Are you with me? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 6 verses 10 to 12. When we read that passage of scripture, being constant and consistent plays a major part of a believer's life. Constancy of purpose. Consistency of faith. Consistency of confession. Professing what you have believed, convicted on your belief system and speaking the word of God even in your valleys. That is what will strengthen you. The Bible says for God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name. In having ministered and in still ministering to the saints. I like that word. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence. Why have I highlighted that diligence? Each one show the same. That means each and every soldier in the army of God must show the same earnestness. Same diligence. Same movement. Moving in ranks together, possessing the land in the name of Jesus. 
An army is progressive when it is organized. An army is progressive when there is order in the ranks. An army will gain ground when you are together, moving together constantly in consistency of your purpose, taking that lost ground in Jesus' name. And it says, so as to realize the full assurance of hope until the end. Then it says, so that you will not be sluggish. You'll not become lazy. You'll not give up your ghost. You will be agile. You will be determined. Are you with me? But imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Say faith and patience. How, how did Abraham obtain his promises? Faith and patience. Faith and patience are like two track railway that will take your life to your destination. That will help you to possess your possession. That will help you to possess the promise that is written in God's word not to be enjoyed in heaven but here now on earth. Amen. The Greek word for patience is makrothumia. It means endurance, consistency, constancy, steadfastness, perseverance. The English dictionary defines patience as bearing pains or trials calmly without complaint. Hello? However, macrothumia is a composition of two words. The first is thumos, which connotes the idea of passion as is breathing hard. Fierceness, indignation or zeal. What did fill Jesus' heart? The zeal of the house of the Lord. Yes. The passion. Yes. Stir it up, O oh God. Yes. Stir up the passion in my heart. Yes. That's what the word macro, actu- thumos actually means. Right? Passion, zeal, fierceness, indignation. That means there is holy anger. There is something happening inside you. There's churning that takes place inside you. When you see injustice, when you see a sinner's die, when you see corruption among the Christians, there is some holy righteous indignation. You want to make a change. Change does not happen for impassionate people. Change happens for passionate people. Change does not happen. Just like that, it happens for people who are breathing fire from heaven inside the belly. That's what they are doing. They are breathing fire. They are breathing out fire. They are having holy anger in the name of Jesus. My house shall be called the house of prayer. Not a merchandising place. Are you with me? The word macros... Is not the French president Macron. It means to be long in place or time. That means you are full of passion, full of zeal, and you are steadfast in your faith in one place for a long time, fighting your battle, destroying the enemy, taking ahead the strongholds of Satan, and possessing the land. God is not looking for people who come in and fly by. God is looking for people who come in and stay by. And they will be grounded and rooted in God's word. And they will never be shaken because they are founded by the rivers of the living water. They'll always be fruitful. The leaves will always be green. Hallelujah. So combine these two words together, it presents a picture of not just enduring, but maintaining a zeal or a passionate state of mind for a time, for a season. What do I mean by that? When Jesus, after, when he was put by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, a season of time, when he had fasted and prayed, when he was tempted and tested, Satan departed from him. Why? Because he said, he did not say I'm anointed one. Come on. When Jesus was tempted, he was not bragging. His sonship from heaven, his kingship of heaven, 
Jesus was not bragging on that, but Jesus said, Jesus bragged about the word. It is written. It is written. It is also written. That is what Jesus said. He didn't say, I'm going to die and Satan, you'll be dead. He was not preempting him. He was not talking to him about his future. He was not telling him, you go to hell, you go to the pit. Are you with me? Come on. He was not saying, hey, I'm the son of God. No. Don't you think the devil did not know? He knows. But how did Jesus overcome? For a long period of time. Till that time the devil flees from you. You must be macrothumia. I said something. Come on. You must be macrothumia. Thumos and macros goes together in the name of Jesus. That I will stand in one place maintaining my zeal, my passion and my passionate state of mind for a time. For a time till I've seen my enemies destroyed in Jesus name. You will not run away till you have seen your Satan destroyed. Your people who are rising against you destroyed in the name of Jesus. Macrothumia. I will stay put. I will put my feet on the ground and I shall not move. I shall not budge. It doesn't matter. It's a boxing man. Come on. In the boxing ring who stays up, his hands goes up. You will stay till you have given a final punch to the mouth of the enemy. He's anyway a toothless lion. So no more uh, teeth to, you know, get rid of. Are you with me? But he needs one more shot. That his lips will get hurt. Break his nose. Hallelujah. He'll think twice to come to you. Do you think your enemy comes when he knows he's been beaten by you? Come on. I ask you again. Have you ever seen, I, I used to be a fighter, you know, there was a, one guy who, 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 you know, teased my sister. When she was going to the college, I went with my gang of men, got the guy out from the house and beat him up. His father came home asking for forgiveness on behalf of his son. So you've got a dangerous pastor <laughs> who beats up people. <laughs> this pastor also like that only <laughs> birds of the same feather flock together <laughs> are you with me so man we are not afraid we fight a battle we stand our ground and we fight we know how to fight Satan we know how to take him out in the name of Jesus And God is wanting and expecting every believer of the church to have the same zeal, to have the same passion, to have the same determination of mind so that you will not move. You'll be such a bullheaded. It doesn't matter. You see Satan with the red frock. You will go after him and you will destroy him till you have seen every enemy destroyed. You will not be at peace. Come on. There is a war sound. There is a warfare sound. There is no easy humming, dumming, you know, and no loving Jesus, loving Jesus. Come on, Jesus is not all loving, loving Jesus. Jesus is Jesus of war. He's a God of fire, he's a God of battle. He says, I'll go before you, I will fight for you. The enemy that you have seen today, you will see him again no more. These are God's words. These are God's words. He's a God of war. And the church must be a church of war in the name of Jesus. If you want to see your destiny fulfilled, you start waging warfare. In the name of Jesus. And my dear brothers and sisters, we all know we have only one enemy. Who's our enemy? Your pastor is not your enemy. Your pastor loves you. He was a man beater, now he's a man saver. <laughs> Praise God. Are you with me? The Bible says 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't war according to the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations, logical interventions. That's what we destroy, speculations. The word speculations is a worldly word linked to the worldly system. I repeat, we don't speculate, we move by faith. I repeat, we don't speculate, we move by faith because we hear from God. And those impossible things that God wants us to do, we don't speculate about it. It's not trial and error basis, it is on the done basis. When God says, I've given you the land, it means he has given you the land. You must go and possess it. Going and possessing is work involved. You want to freely receive everything. You receive your salvation freely. But after that you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There's a working out. Some push-ups. Build up your muscles. Do some bench press. Are you with me? Do some marathons. Run. Be fit in the Lord. That's what God is calling. We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of God. Jesus Christ and we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is complete every rebellion is caused when you obey rebellion in your mind deception in your mind even if you are sitting doubtfully in doubtful disposition you must be like that Thomas you say oh God you know until and unless I put my fingers in his hands but be in the place where you can meet with the word Be in a place where you can have an opportunity to put your fingers in his nail-pierced hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God doesn't, you know, despise the doubtful Thomases, but God allows them to have a closer look. Do you want a closer look of the word? And I want to give you a closer look of the word. Let's go further. All right. So is it God's will that his people will prosper in every way? Yes, only one person says yes. You are still in doubtful disposition. Okay, but if God's people do not understand the schemes of Satan and learn how to destroy them, we will suffer defeat. I repeat, we will suffer defeat. Why? We don't want to hear the word defeat. But if I'm as your pastor not teach you the word, then you will not know how to win. And as your pastor, I want you to win. There's a win-win situation when we are with Jesus. You will be a winner on earth. You'll be a winner in heaven. You'll be a winner in marriage. You'll be a winner in raising up our family. You'll be a winner in your business. Winner in your jobs. Winner everywhere. Favor. You're a walking, talking favor of God. God starts opening doors for you. Such humongous doors that your mind cannot imagine or fathom. That's what he does. So a spiritual enemy, you know, is always working against you and what dissipates him and what defeats him is the knowledge of the word is the utilization of the word is the implementation of the word is raging up the hedges all around us which are broken down so the enemy cannot come again praise the Lord the Bible says in Hosea 4 6 my people are destroyed they fail or perish the word destroyed means Fail or perish for lack of knowledge that is discernment, understanding and wisdom. That's what discernment is. That's what wisdom is and knowledge is. Are you with me? And therefore it is the goal of Amazing Grace Church to equip every member of the body of Christ that you will be in a win-win position, win-win situation, that you will be a winner all along. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is with you. You know how to strategize. You know how to position yourself. You know how to wage a war. You know how to back down. You know when to stay quiet. You know when to move. You know when to open your mouth and destroy the enemy. That is what we want to do. You know why? Because God has called you his people. And I like that. Say I'm God's. God has called you his people. You are his champions, you are the kings, and you are the priests. Hallelujah. You can surely tell Satan about that. 
and he already knows about it. You know why? Because the glory of Yeshua shines through your forehead. The name of Jesus is engraved here. Therefore, the mark of the beast will not come upon your forehead. The mark of Antichrist is not going to come upon you. Why? Because Jesus is branded on by the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is lasered, is tattooed on your forehead, on your body. Your DNA talks Jesus. Jesus. Glory and power and honor is to the Lamb. Jesus. So when the demons say they bow. When the, you walk on the streets of Dubai, they bow. No, the other cars are meeting with accident. You are safe and protected. You know why? Because the demons cannot orchestrate anything. They are bound and paralyzed because Jesus is engraved on your forehead. And Satan has to run away. That's what the Bible says in Revelation 5, 8 to 10. Now when he had taken the scroll and the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. I like that, prayers of the saints. Say prayers of the saints. Prayers. Have you prayed and have not heard? Let me tell you, God is about to pour down that bowl right over your head. You will see earthquake all around you. You will see tsunamis all around you. Because that is an answer to the prayer that you had been making. The tears that you had been shedding. God is about to answer it. And he's going to reward you. Because your prayers, you have not stopped praying. As a church. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, uh, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made. I like that word, made. Say made. made. What is made? A past tense. Come on. Even before Adam was created, he predestined you. Whoa. Even before Eve was created, he made Samuel and he made Chris and he made Sammy and he made Joshua and he made Arlene and he made Ramsey and he made Fabian and he made Doreen and he made Stephen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He made you. Yes. He predestined you, foreordained you before the foundations of this world so that you and I will be the inheritance of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He had you. In his mind, even before he created Adam. Praise the Lord. So he says, he has made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. Say, I will reign on the earth. Come on, man, I'm not going so soon. If you're thinking you'll get a new pastor, I'm sorry to say. You may not have a new pastor. Until unless God takes me somewhere else. Then you may have another pastor. <laughs> I'm here on a long haul. Amen. Come on. Are you here on a long haul? Amen. Mama, are you here on a long haul? Amen. I like Suniti's mama. God bless you. I so get so blessed when I see all white hair. That your hair become white. There's blessing. My wife says, I don't want to see you growing old. Are you with me? We are on a long haul. Say, I'm a long haul. I'm a long haul. Say, I'm on a long haul. I'm a long haul. Okay, half, half. Are you on a long haul? Yes. Come on, are you on a long haul? Yes. Are you on a long haul? Yes. Are you on a long haul? Yes. Okay. So what stops Christians from prospering in this life? I repeat, in this life. Not in heaven. In heaven, there'll be no sickness. In heaven, you don't need money. But what about in this life? In this life, what stops you? Why? What stops you? As the man thinketh, so is he. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 23, 7, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. My dear brothers and sisters, there are four elements to vision. When God took Abraham out, when he departed from Lot, you know, Lots can get blessed because of Abraham. I repeat, Lot was not called, Abraham was called. Lot got blessed because he's cling along with the anointed man of God. 
He was not called, he was not anointed, but he became filthy rich. Just by hanging and having associations with anointed men and men, women of God, you will get the blessing of the Almighty God. And let me tell you, you are not only hanging with the anointed one of the ones of God, but you are the anointed one of God. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm? As we look deeper into the passage of this scripture, we must know that it addresses not only God's desire that we prosper, but also the two areas of human need. Come on. Physical and spiritual. And he says the term be in good health comes from the Greek word hugiano. And it means, it connotes the idea of sound health. To be well, that is the state of being healthy or well in contrast with sickness. To be well, to be healthy. Are you with me? So when God was talking prosper and prosper, in one verse, that was more to prosperity. He was not only talking fulus prosperity, car prosperity, gold prosperity. He was talking more than that. That once you are prosper, you should enjoy the prosperity. Yes. Amen. Yes. God gives you the power to get wealth and also to enjoy it. Yes. When God blesses you, he does not add sorrow to it. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So if you are not having good health, how will you eat a mutton biryani? Or how will you eat gulab jamuns? When Dorian and Dora came to India, we took them to all the sweet shops. And they were so intoxicated with sugar. They said, we don't eat sugar like that. Like how the Indians eat. Are you with me? But my dear brothers and sisters, if you don't have good health, how will you enjoy good food? How will you enjoy the royal platter from the heavenlies? How will you sit on the king's table and eat of the delicacies of God if you don't have good food, have good health? That's why God is interested in your good health. Say good health. Say, I will have good health. I am in good health. I am healed in Jesus' name. That's why Jesus was beaten before he died for your sins. I repeat, Jesus was beaten for your sickness even before he paid the price for your sins. And that's why the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus, you and I were healed. So I am healed in Jesus 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once I was sick, but now I am healed. Once I was a moron, I had no memory, but now I have memory. I know you by your name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have not forgotten you. Amen. I know you by your name and I pray you by your name. For you. Are you with me? And today medical science says it's the disease of the mind. That the enemy is battling for space of electronics and gadgets and television programmings and movies and games that occupies your mind. That brings in probably excitement or fear. And then you do not know how to position yourself in God. It's no wonder Jesus was encouraging his followers. What was he encouraging his followers? In Luke chapter 12, 12, 22 to 28, he said to his disciples, for this reason I say to you, do not worry about your life. <laughs> I like that. Jesus is saying, do not worry about your life as to what you will eat or for your body as to what you will put on. For life is more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn. And yet God feeds them how much more valuable you are than the birds. Yes. Say I'm valuable. Yes. If God can feed the sparrow, he can take care of me. Yes. If the lion can get his share of meat in the African jungles, I will get the best of the best. Yes. The young lions can suffer hunger, but those who fear the Lord, their children will be blessed with the best. Yes. They shall never hunger, they shall never lack, they shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The God of Abraham is the God of my needs. The God of Isaac is the God of my wants. And the God of Jacob is the God of my desires. <laughs> that is why the triunity, the trinity was mentioned. 
He is not only of needs and wants and desires. He is my everything. Praise the Lord. So Jesus is saying, you are more valuable. And which of you by worrying can add a single hour to his lifespan? If then you cannot do even a very little thing, why do you worry about other matters? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass in the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, how much more will he clothe you? Aren't your wardrobes falling over? Correct? Yeah, correct. She's an honest woman. All the women are thinking, should I tell or not? You don't need to buy anymore, but you still buy. Are you with me? This brings us back to the same position. In all respects, you may prosper. You may prosper. Just as your soul prospers. What does the word just as actually means? Just as actually means it's a Greek word kathos, which means in as much as, according to or because of. Are you with me? That means as much you can see. So what are the four elements of visioning? As far as you see Abraham, I will give you. So Abraham saw northward, southward, eastward, westward. As far as you see, the church will be a visionary church. A believer will be a visionary believer. A believer, a marriage will be a visionary marriage. A family will be a visionary family. You will be not bereft of vision. That's why God said, in the end times, I'll pour my spirit and you will dream dreams and have visions. Yes. I will open your eyes so you'll be able to see beyond what surrounds you. Yes. What entraps you, what ensnares you. I will unshackle you. I'll ramshackle you. I'll destroy every wall that the enemy has erected and I will make you see beyond. Don't worry about the lot. We know the end result of Lot, what happened? He died in incest. Created problem in Ammon and Moab for all of Israel, even till date. Are you with me, church? So what God is saying, it means action. Just as your soul prospers, faith without works is dead. Likewise, your patience cannot be fully Recompensed until and unless you're waiting on the Lord and making action. Speak the word, do the word, and God will bless you. That's what the Bible says. What we must do, what we must do. The question comes What works must we do to obtain prosperity in our soul? Uh, question What we must do? Open with me the book of Romans, chapter 12. I beseech you brethren by the mercies of God present your bodies as the living sacrifice unto God and then he what says for this is your reasonable and a spiritual service unto him and then it says what huh? do not be conformed to this world it's a command but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is that which is good and acceptable and perfect So by staying in the word, grounded in the word, reading the word, studying the word, memorizing the word, meditating upon the word, the word will fill your mind. You'll be so grounded and rooted that you will be a bullhead for Satan. You know why? Satan will run away from you. Man, this is a man of word. And not only of word, a believing guy, but a confessing guy. So the first aspect of vision is to see. Say to see. See. Then is to believe. Amen. And then to speak. And then to receive. Visioning that doesn't happen into physical reality. You may be a great dreamer. It doesn't happen into a physical reality. Until unless start believing, start speaking and start receiving. That's the four elements of visioning. So God is saying to Abraham, see. Believe it. That I have given it to you. That's what God was saying to Israel. See it, the land of Canaan before you. It's yours. I've given to you. Believe it. Receive it in Jesus' name. Speak it. Just by believing you don't become a Christian. By confessing you become a Christian. 
by confessing you appropriate your salvation by confessing the word i speak the word of god the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life jeremiah 1:12 says i stand behind my word to make it happen yes. hallelujah so what saves your mind james 1:21 to 22 therefore putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness in humility receive the word implanted which is able to save your soul that means what god's word is saying take away the king james says remove the superfluity of naughtiness that means trying to act smart with the word of god that's what it actually means superfluity of naughtiness in the scripture you know some christians educated ones they are very smart with god's word don't be smart with god's word receive god's word yes. receiving takes an action a willing mind a willing heart a teachable spirit lord i receive i receive i eat your word i drink your word i thirst for your word i'm hungry for your word fill me o oh lord amen. amen so receiving is a verb an action word i receive the word I receive my prosperity. I receive my healing. I receive my gains. I receive my possession in the name of Jesus. Right? Putting aside. Putting aside actually means casting off. 